Hello, today I want to teach you about affinity. I'm going to go over how affinity works, the types of affinity, and the basics of leveling. By the end of this, you should have an alright understanding of how to level nearly anything. Timestamps are in the description. Affinity is what we call experience, or XP in Warframe. There are many ways to gain this affinity, and there are a few different types. The following bit of information will be a spoiler for the second dream and the war within. If you do not wish to be spoiled, skip to 158. Focus is the affinity gain for your operator and it allows you to unlock ways in your school of choice. The primary way to gain focus is through lenses. Lenses can only be equipped on a max level weapon or warframe, including amps. If you form a weapon or warframe with a lens equipped, that lens will become inactive until you have max leveled it again. Lenses work by converting excess affinity on the weapon or warframe it is equipped on into focus. Regular lenses convert 1.25%, greater 1.75%, Eidolon 2.25% and the Lua lens with 3.25%. There is also a way in the Naramon school which increases experience gained from all sources for melee weapons by up to 45%. The description in the game itself is incorrect at least at the time of recording. After defeating an Eidolon you can convert Eidolon shards into focus. Convergence orbs or more commonly known as focus orbs, will spawn throughout missions if you have at least one lens equipped. These orbs will multiply any focus gained through lenses by eight. Standing is the affinity gain for syndicates and factions. There are a few different ways you can gain standing. You can use a sigil from that faction, do syndicate missions, do bounties in the overworld locations, or cashing in syndicate emblems found in the syndicate missions. Some syndicates like Vox Solaris and the Quills require certain items to be donated in turn for standing. The primary way of gaining standing is through the use of sigils. These sigils provide bonus standing by converting a percent of all affinity gains. The starting sigils provide no bonus standing. Rank 1 to 5 sigils provide 5, 8, 11, 13, and 15 percent respectively. Intrinsics are needed to upgrade your Railjack classes. For simplicity, around 10% of all affinity gains in Railjack missions get converted into intrinsic points. It takes about 10,000 affinity to gain one intrinsic point. Endo isn't technically affinity, however it is the type of experience that you use to level up mods, including your Railjack. You get Endo just by playing the game, however a mod drop chance booster increases Endo drops. Affinity boosters double affinity gained from all sources. Affinity boosters stack and are additive. However, they only stack from additional sources of the booster. For example, if you buy a booster from the market, you will gain 3, 7, 30 days of double XP. If you buy another 3, 7, 30 day affinity booster, it will add those days together, getting 6 to 60 days of double XP. Getting any affinity booster through the game will add those days together. The only time they will stack is if there is an XP event or your Smita Kavat uses charm and gives you the XP buff, which will also double XP. Putting those three methods into action gives you six times the XP. You can also pair this with stealth kill bonuses for a max of six time increase on experience gained during its uptime in missions. Quick note about boosters, they also affect intrinsic gains for Railjack, focus gains, and standing. Now let's talk about how affinity works. This may get confusing, so I will try to simplify it at the end. In game you have affinity, which I'll refer to as real XP, and bonus affinity, which I'll refer to as fake XP. You will gain affinity for kills and interactions while you play. Getting a kill will provide affinity. You get this XP right away. If you quit the mission or fail, you keep this XP. This is real XP. As you get kills, you will receive bonus affinity or fake XP. This type of XP is rewarded on mission completion and will not apply to your weapon or warframe until you have completed the mission. If you quit or fail, you will lose this affinity. 
Bonus Affinity is awarded as 125% of the base experience an item receives during the mission. For example, if you gain 100 XP, this means you will gain an extra 125%, equaling a total of 225 XP. To simplify this, real XP you get to keep, fake XP you get after you successfully complete a mission. Bonus XP is a percentage of XP gained during the mission. There is a general rule in which affinity is divided among the gear you bring. 25% is dedicated to your Warframe, 75% is dedicated to your weapons. However, there are some things you can do to change these numbers. Let's move on to how to actually gain affinity. You can gain affinity by getting kills, having your allies get kills, using abilities, hacking a terminal, completing an objective, collecting affinity orbs, and by using your codex scanner. Affinity orbs drop as an item from lockers, containers, and kubro dens. To explain some of these, when you get a kill with your Warframe, 100% of the affinity goes towards your frame. Shared affinity, or kills, made by other players within affinity range, will grant the same amount of affinity divided according to the general rule that I previously mentioned. Affinity range is this buff icon. It represents you being within range of another player to receive affinity from their kills. This affinity range is 50 meters in a regular mission and has some other uses that aren't important to this video, but it's still useful to know that there are other uses. If you see this buff icon, this means somebody has used an item to increase affinity range. Parazon kills, 50% goes to your Warframe and the other 50% is lost. Using abilities usually is a 1 to 1 ratio of the base ability cost to affinity gain. Now talking about changing those general rule numbers, this mostly applies to affinity range and your allies getting the kills. You can change the amount of affinity your weapons and warframes receive during a mission. If you have 4 weapons out counting your arc gun when it is summoned, each weapon will receive 18.75% of the 75% affinity split. The other 25% is going to the Warframe. For 3 weapons, it's 25 each, 2, 37.5, and the full 75% for only one weapon. If you have 0 weapons equipped, all affinity goes to the Warframe. This means if you equip an exalted weapon, this will override the weapon you brought. For example, a melee equipped and you use Excalibur's exalted weapon. This rule applies even if your weapons are already at max rank they will still split the affinity according to this rule. Companions have their own separate pool of affinity. They gain affinity at the same time, but it is not split between you and them. Their pool of affinity is split between the companion and its weapon at 50%. If it does not have a weapon, your companion receives 100% of the affinity. Your companion getting kills will not give you affinity. Enemy Scaling and Affinity Without this becoming a math lesson, the longer you go in a mission, the more affinity starts to flatten out. Enemies give more affinity the higher their level. More enemies spawn per player in the mission. Enemies scale depending on kill speed. Enemies don't level if you don't kill them. This information can be useful for other missions as well. This isn't a farming tutorial, though I do believe in maximizing your efficiency. Therefore, I will be mentioning a few ways to do so. A little note. Corrupt enemies scale slightly different. They have higher base values on most stats and the scale rate is slightly higher than normal enemies. As the enemy's level increases, so does the amount of XP. However, the scaling of the armor, health, shield, and damage is greater than the XP. This means that the enemies will become harder to kill the longer you go. It is worth noting that Eximus start to spawn more frequently the longer you go. Eximus are harder to kill and have a special buff to them. They do grant more affinity on kill, but they do become a pain to deal with, especially with scaling. Eximus are soon to be reworked at the time of this video. One of the highlighted details that are subject to change on release is they will have extra rewards for defeating them, including affinity. For defense missions, enemies will generally scale 1 to 2 levels per wave depending on the difficulty of the mission. By the time you start wave 5, you can estimate the enemies will be 5 to 10 levels higher. By the time you reach wave 20, nearly 20 to 40 levels higher. This is just a generalization. There are actual formulas and math involved. 
enemies will slowly start to give less XP the longer you go, to a point. It is much faster to do 10 to 20 waves, then restart the mission to avoid the higher difficulty of the enemies. Most people will leave the mission anywhere from wave 10 to 20. If you want the most XP, stay till 20. This will also give you a full rotation of drops, following the AABC drop table. Doing fissures is a good way to get multiple resources and farms as well as leveling gear. Let's talk about where to level. A lot of the most popular places to level are defense missions because you stand and guard a single point and they have a lot of other farming possibilities such as relics. If you are or are with a good kill frame, a single wave on the highest level planets should take less than a minute to complete, assuming there are four players. There are many popular places to level and be leveled. One of the easiest ways to level is to go into the recruiting chat and ask for a level farm. There is always a few people doing leveling. If not, you could go into a resource farm as it is a win-win. Sometimes you will see people doing 20 minute survivals, 30 minute plastid farms, or some other form of farm. These are a lot more efficient for your time as a player. Even if you don't need the resource now, it never hurts to get more, and you will be receiving affinity while you farm. Something to keep in mind is resource farms can be a hardcore or a pretty chill setting. The more hardcore farms will want specific frames and or builds to be used for maximum efficiency. In chill farms, you can usually do whatever. Depending on your MR or mastery rank and how far you progress into the game, you will gain access to more places on the star chart. One of the first places you have access to is Lith on Earth. If there are no squads available, lots of higher MR players will have no problem going for 20 waves. All you have to do is ask. The next place you should go is Io on Jupiter. This is one of the best places to farm the resource Oxium in the game, and you are very likely to find a squad there. The next place to look for is Helene on Saturn. This is one of the next best places to go besides Hydron on Sedna being the next place you'll want to set your sights on. Forgive my pronunciation, Stoifler on Lua is highly underrated and you will need to form a squad for this as no one uses it. It is a fairly strong affinity farm, though it does take slightly longer due to the map changing size the longer you go. This is also a very strong farm for the double A rotation, which is wave 10. When you get access to Sanctuary Onslaught after the new Strange Quest, this is probably one of the most efficient and fast ways to level anything. There is usually some kill frames doing this all the time. However, you can always go to recruiting if you need one. The best place to level your weapons would be Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. If you are leveling your Warframe, you will have to go to Sanctuary Onslaught. There are some other methods to leveling even faster but are intended for more seasoned players. I have already made a video relating to this. If you want to see that video, I will link it in the description. Extra information. Exalted weapons are special weapons that only certain Warframes have. These weapons are unique, they are stronger, utilize mods from the weapon and Warframe itself, and do not use ammo but use energy instead. What is also interesting is they replace the weapon in that equipment slot. Therefore, you can technically have zero weapons equipped, allowing 100% of all affinity to go to your Warframe. This includes ally kills. Exalted weapons gain the same amount of affinity as Warframes, so 100% of the affinity goes towards your Warframe because the exalted weapons count as ability kills. Exalted weapons gain affinity at the same pace as your frame, but they will level quicker due to needing less XP than a Warframe. It is worth noting that exalted weapons are an ability. For example, if you take Mesa, which has an exalted secondary weapon, into a melee only sortie, you can still use her exalted pistols. To summarize all the information and include some tips for leveling, the too long didn't watch portion of the video, it is better to maximize your leveling potential. This means trying to get two birds with one stone and not leveling solo. If you are leveling a Warframe and are not a kill frame, mod your Warframe to spam as much as possible. Even if it doesn't get kills, you will still receive XP for casting. Level one weapon at a time. If you are strictly leveling weapons, you can get a level 30 weapon in one wave of Elite Sanctuary Onslaught with a good kill frame and a booster. If you are not leveling one weapon at a time, remember to remove or swap any weapons that are already max leveled. 
When leveling weapons, spray and pray. Kills equal affinity. You may end up getting in a kill or two regardless of how good the kill frame is. Try to level with a friend or someone who is able to kill lots very quickly. This will speed up the process greatly because bonus experience is bigger than regular experience. Use boosters and a cavat whenever you can to save time. If you want to focus farm efficiently, remember, you gain the same amount of affinity as the person killing. If you get a focus orb, spam your abilities. This will be converted into focus. The best place to gain affinity is Sanctuary Onslaught or Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. People are always willing to farm, don't be afraid to ask. There is one important thing to remember when farming focus. Try not to farm focus with gear that does not have a lens on it, as the general rule will still apply even if there is no lens resulting in a loss of affinity. However, you can stack lenses on multiple pieces of equipment for more focus in a single school. When leveling focus, it is best to put your lens or first lens on something that does the most killing. For myself personally, I would rather take the deficit in affinity to farm for other things as well. You can get plenty of relics for a slight decrease in affinity if you do excavations or even better, fissure excavation. There are plenty of ways to level and many different ways to farm. Pick what best suits you and decide what you want out of your farm. It is your time and you should be able to use it however you want. Thank you for watching and I hope this video has helped you.